it's time for you all to wake up and shift your paradigm. This world is the kingdom of darkness and we are living in its last days. It won't be long before the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth and everything therein shall be burnt up. The Luciferian elite have been setting up the new world order and now they've established the globalist beast system for the rise of that wicked one and revealing of the man of sin who comes after the workings of Satan. Don't take my word for it. Read the Bible and you'll know that perilous times shall come in the last days. And we are in the last days. Sisters, it is the Remnant Warrior here from Kingdom Productions and Publishing. And I just want to welcome all of you who don't already watch this channel on a regular basis. I want to let you know that we upload new content several times a week, but at least every week. So... You don't want to miss out when we upload something new. Thank you all in advance for your subscription. I love each and every one of you. Until next time, God bless you all. The wickedest man in the world is dead, proclaimed the British sensational press with relief when Aleister Crowley died on December the 1st, 1947. According to Crowley, though, he isn't finished yet. One thousand years from now, Crowley once wrote, the world will be sitting in the sunset of Crowleyanity. The self-aggrandizing Crowley called himself the Great B666 and many other tongue-in-cheek apocalyptic titles. The reaction from the shock public seemed understandable. Crowley had dedicated his whole life to a feverish, uncompromising search for meaning. He experimented with magical cults, invented his own religion, and it is said drove some of his fondlers insane with eerie rituals. Crowley has been charged with sodomy, murder, and ritual rape. He is said to have advocated drinking the blood of infants. According to Crowley's diaries, he performed this sacrifice about 150 times per year from 1912 to 1928. But it's hardly likely he murdered infants unless... You want to believe the truth. The popular belief now is a lie. He studied white and black magic and he practiced both, although he written that he condemned it strongly. 
All one has to do is read Crowley's writings to see that that is a bald face lie. He was a black magician. This presentation is about the Beleskin House on the shores of Loch Ness, which was built as a hunting lodge in the late 18th century. Archibald C. Fraser, who served as a British consul in Tripoli and Algiers, commissioned Beleskin House, although it wasn't finished until 1809. Having outlived all his sons, the house would later pass to Archibald T. Fraser, and the estate remained in the ownership of the Fraser family until 1894. In 1899, British poet, mountaineer, and exotericist Alistair Crowley purchased Bullskin for £2,000, which was twice the market value at that time. Bullskin, he believed, provided a more favorable location for his occult practices. He wished to conduct a series of rituals from the Book of Abramelin a mid-15th century manuscript of a Jewish mystical Kabbalistic text that would become central to Crowley's new religion of the Lima, which he believed would help him make contact with the demon Lilith. When Crowley first moved into Beleskin House, he found it necessary to write a letter of complaint to the Lozial Vigilant Society. Prostitution, Crowley wrote, is most unpleasantly conspicuous in the area. An officer of the society was duly sent to investigate and deeply puzzled, reported that they could find no evidence whatsoever of prostitution. Crowley wrote back, Conspicuous by its absence, you fools. Before moving to Beleskin, Crowley had been living in rooms in Chancery Lane, London, where he had fashioned two temples for his occult explorations, one white and lined with six huge mirrors, the other black with an altar supported by the figure of a black man standing on his hands, and with a human skeleton that Crowley would feed from time to time with blood, small birds, and the like. The idea, he explained, was to give it life, but I never got further than to cause the bones to be covered with the viscous slime. Alistair Crowley brought Beleskin with the express purpose of performing an elaborate magical ritual there. Part of this ceremony involved summoning demonic 
entities and binding them with the goal of removing their negative influences from the magician's life. This is a very dangerous ritual to attempt because regardless of what any magician tells you, demons cannot be controlled. Crowley's notoriety and where the ritual is where much of the Volskin legend comes from. Legend has it that the house was built on the site of a 10th century Scottish kirk or church which had burnt down killing the entire congregation trapped inside. In an ancient publication compiled from parish archives called An Account of the Kirk of Boleskine, it is recorded that in the second half of the 17th century a minister, one Thomas Houston, whose intricately carved stone is still to be seen in the graveyard, was called in his manse by locals when a notorious local wizard raised the bodies of the dead. Minister Houston had the most difficult task of laying them to rest again. One traveler kept a journal describing the graveyard at that period. After dinner, we took a walk to see the Kirk of Valeska, the poorest edifice of any kind I ever looked upon, as is also the manse. The churchyard is quite open without any walls, where you see plenty of human bones above ground, and the floor of the Kirk is overspread with them, but how much I was shocked to hear that sometimes the dogs are seen carrying the human bones in their teeth. The actual magical ritual which Crowley attempted to perform at Boleskine had plenty to do with black masses and black magic. It's known as the Abramelin operation, taken from the book of the sacred magic of magical knowledge dating back to at least the middle of the 15th century. Crowley seems to have become aware of the ritual from the 1897 translation of the Book of Occultist Samuel Lydon Mathers, one of the founders of the Golden Dawn, which Crowley had joined in 1898 before falling out with most of its members. Due to its relative seclusion, because, as Crowley puts it, one must have proper precautions against disturbance can be taken. This being arranged, there is really nothing 
to do but aspire with increasing fervor and concentration for six months. Six months is the French translated version, but in the original manuscript it states 18 months towards the obtaining of the knowledge and conversation of the holy guardian angel. The house also had the necessary opening to the north where Crowley built a terrace adorned with fine river sand, a place where, as proof of the ritual's progress, the footprints of the spirits were to appear. Crowley considered this building to be the Thelemic Kibla, a kind of esoteric mecca or a focal point for mystical energy, making it a powerful center for performing intense magical rituals. purpose of performing the lengthy and intense ritual was for the magician to communicate with his so-called holy guardian angel or higher self. The mage must summon and mentally conquer the twelve kings and dukes of hell, including Lucifer, Satan, Leviathan, and Belial and bind them, thereby gaining command of them in his own mental universe. The ceremony has an introduction which states that nobody should perform it. Unfortunately for Crowley and those around him, the Avermelon Rite seems to have succeeded mainly in summoning the demons, or the devils as Crowley calls them, Crowley was said to have summoned 115 entities. During the rituals, there were reports of a heavy, oppressive atmosphere at Bolskin. Dark, eerie shadows filled the house. Fierce winds blew through the rooms despite calm weather. Historian Francis King said this about the book. The sacred magic of Adamantalin expresses its doctrine and the technique which depends from it more clearly and more consistently than any other grimoire. The machinery of the cosmos is seen and operated by demons under the direction of angels. Man is seen as standing between the angelic and the demonic, each human being having attached to his or her soul a malevolent demon and a holy guardian angel. That's a laugh. The object of the process taught in the sacred magic was a, the obtaining of the knowledge and conversation of this holy guardian angel. Once this had been done, the Magician could control the demons who run the universe, raise the dead, heal the sick, and find great treasures, and even fly. These rituals apparently required six months of preparation as well as celibacy and absence. Crowley was called away to Paris by his Grand Master, the head of the Golden Dome, before completing the spells. 
Shortly after Crowley left for Paris, the locals began to murmur about the dark black clouds hanging in the skies around Bolskin House. Many residents going far out of their way to avoid traveling near the building. Upon his return to Boleskine, Crowley immediately felt the changes in his estate. Even his protege had fled the property while he was gone. His description of what transpired during the ritual can be found in his diary. Besides these comparatively expectable effects on humans, there was no, numberless physical phenomenon for which it's hard. While I was preparing the talisman, squares of vellum inscribed in Indian ink, a task which I undertook in the sunniest room in the house, I had to use artificial light even on the brightest days, it was a darkness which might almost be felt. The lodge and terrace, moreover, soon became peopled with shadowy shapes and sufficiently substantial as a rule to be almost opaque. I say shapes, and yet the truth is that they were no shapes properly speaking. The phenomenon is hard to describe. It was the faculty of vision suffered some interference, as if objects of vision were not properly objects at all. It was as if they belonged to an order of matter which affected the sight without informing. One day, I came back from shooting rabbits on the hillside and I found a Catholic priest in my study. He had come to tell me that my lodge keeper, a total abstainer for 20 years, had been raving drunk for three days and had tried to kill his wife and children. I got an old Cambridge acquaintance to take Rushner's place but he too began to show symptoms of panic fear. The demons and evil forces had congregated round me so thickly that they were shutting off the light. It was a comforting situation. There could be no more doubt of the efficiency of the operation. Despite these clear signs that dark forces were abroad, Crowley continued to work on the ritual going so far as to de deny visits from friends for fear of their safety. One story concerns a local butcher who called at the house for the meat order while Crowley was involved in the lengthy, difficult ritual of the abramelin. The butcher's incessant ringing of the bell broke Crowley's concentration and, irritated and frustrated, he hastily scrawled the meat order on the nearest piece of paper with happened to have a spell written on the back. Shortly afterwards, when the butcher was cutting up the meat for Crowley's order back at his shop, he apparently lost concentration and sliced all the fingers off his right hand with the cleaver. Other stories tell of the unexplained disappearance of Crowley's housekeeper 
and a local workman who went out of his mind after being tormented by the dark spirits conjured up by Crowley's ritual. Crowley didn't spend much more time at Boleskin, and he sold the property in 1913. It is said that the demons and folk during these sessions were never banished, and strange things have been happening at Boleskin Mansion ever since. Boleskin was then registered in the ownership of Dorothy C. Priestley, and plans were introduced in 1926 to make significant alterations and extensions to the former hunting lodge. However, these plans never came to fruition. The house passed through a series of owners after Priestley. Being purchased by Foyer's Hotels, LTD, in 1944, then to David Shirley Crichton Simpson in 1946, who, a year later, sold the property to a John Robert Rankin Fullerton. Boleskine House next came into the ownership of Mary Verity Grant, otherwise known as Mary Lorraine. It is alleged that while at an art exhibition in Inverness, Mary Lorraine met Molly Lorraine. The latter was fascinated by Boleskine's mysterious lore and wanted to buy the property. When she met Mary, who shared her surname, it was too strange to call it coincidence, and she convinced her husband to purchase the the property in 1963. Dennis Lorraine was a career con man. It was Dennis Lorraine who got Hollywood actor George Sanders, which Wikipedia incorrectly, incorrectly states was George Raft, involved in a scam which would become known as the Great Sausage Scandal. No one seems to know the exact timeline, but the scam was that Dennis would set up a company called Loch Ness Foods and claim he was rearing pigs on the site except that no pig farm existed and this is how he managed to dupe George Sanders into getting involved. By the time the law had caught up to Lorraine he had sold Boleskine House and fled to the U.S. A certain Mayor Edward Grant and his wife Mary were next to take possession of Boleskine. The Major later committed suicide in the former bedroom of Crowley in 1965. Anna McLaurin and his housekeeper at the time and had an eerie premonition of the tragedy. She was alone picking vegetables from the garden when she heard a single gunshot from the house. When she went inside, there was no one in the house. She put the incident in the back of her mind. But seven days later, the same time of day, her employer also shot himself in the head. She recalled, When I came up and went in the front door, there was a little bone lying there, and they had this little doggy. Pickywig was his name. And I said, where did you get that, Pickywig? 
because they had this huge fridge and there was nothing in it. I took the bone and I just threw it. I went in and found him with most his head blown off. Afterwards, I saw Pickywig playing with small bone. Police told me later the bone was part of the major skull. The property was then sold to Halbert Kerr, who ran Beleskin as a guest house to 1971. Beleskin House in the early 1970s, driven by his interest in the life and work of Aleister Crowley, was purchased by Led Zeppelin guitarist Jimmy Page. Page is quoted as saying that he related to Crowley's system of self-liberation in which Represent repression is the greatest sin. It's like being in a job when you want to be doing something else. Page went on to claim that bad vibes ran through the 18th century property, where he maintained the head of an executed man believed to be the Lord. Love it. Those same bad vibes were already there. He said in an interview with Rolling Stone in 1975, a man was beheaded there and sometimes you can hear his head rolling down. I haven't actually heard it, but a friend of mine who is extremely straight and doesn't know anything about anything like that at all heard it. He thought it was cats bungling about. I wasn't there at the time, but he told me the help. Why don't you let the cats out at night? He also said that at Beleskin, it's the atmosphere that counts and not the legends. When I got to go there with friends, writers, and other creative people, I find that Commissioning the artist and occultist Charles Pace to paint a mural by those on scene from the Led Zeppelin film, The Song Remains the Same, were filmed in the grounds. But in the 19 years he owned the house, Page spent no more than a few months there. Instead, he put it in the care of his friend, Malcolm Dent. Over the years, Dent would report numerous strange occurrences and noises in the house, including passing what he described as the most terrifying night of my life when he was awakened by what sounded like an animal snorting outside his bedroom door. Dent opened the door to find nothing, but added whatever was there was very, very evil. So arriving at Boleskin and discovering one that it has a history and a past and a pretty weird past at that. Two, that there are certain things still going on there. Crowley, when he was raising the various demons and spirits at Boleskin, failed to banish all of them back from whence they came and that one or two residues had been left behind. And he actually mentions that he had left this one 
bricked up, in, as he put it, in, a, in the center of Boleskine House. The room I was in that night was the center of Boleskine House. Another friend who stayed at the house awoke one night claiming she had been attacked by some kind of devil. Doors would be slamming all night. You'd go into another room and carpets and rugs would be piled up. Another regular occurrence was that the back door, inside doors and kitchens would suddenly spring open as if someone was running through them, even on calm days. We just used to say it was Alistair Crowley doing his thing. He stayed on at Boleskine, happily raising his family there until Paige sold up in The house then passed into private hands, but in 2015, it was almost completely destroyed by a fire and a suspected arson attack. It was 2018 it was put on the buildings at risk register for Scotland. At the same time, a paranormal research group, Highland Paranormal, conducted an investigation at the property but were unable to detect any supernatural activity. The following year, it was purchased by Kyra and Keith Reddy, who established the Boleskin House Foundation as a charitable trust. A week after the foundation purchased Boleskin House, a second fire broke out and yet another suspected arson attack collapsing the roof of the property. Scottish Highland councillors have approved plans for the restoration of the Leston. The building is to be reinstated as a Category B listed building alongside the construction of a 10 holiday lodges as a part of the ambitious rebuild worth more than 1.2 million pounds, the Sunday Times report in December 2020 alleged that the founder of a secular conservation charity that has pledged to turn a landmark building into an educational center admitted her true intention was to spread the spiritual doctrines of a notorious occultist. But trustees of the Boleskine House Foundation vehemently denied the claims Foundation has insisted its intention is to turn Boleskine into a center dedicated to promoting Highland history and conservation. There is no intention for the house to become a place of pilgrimage for Alistair Crowley and Black Magic. You are free to believe what you will. Boleskine House was used for all sorts of rituals and summoned all sorts of demons. Stay tuned for part two coming soon.